Good evening, everyone. We still have some time, and I appreciate uh, people who joined before time. As we are scheduled to start this session by 3 p.m., uh, we would start uh, another couple of minutes. Uh, beforehand, I would just request all the participants uh, who have joined uh, us, uh, if you are using an alternative device of uh, the Android phone or an iPhone, you can uh, scan this QR code and be ready. Uh, end of the session, uh, we will have a live session for EBSCO Mobile Lab, and we'll talk about the EBSCO Mobile Lab and its compatibility with eBooks. Thank you, everyone. And just to reconfirm, uh, beforehand, if you all can scan this QR code and install it on your mobile phone, uh, the EBSCO Mobile Lab can be downloaded uh, from the App Store, or you can get it on Google Play. For the ease of users, there is a QR code which is plotting on the screen. You can scan this code and be ready with the EBSCO Mobile Lab. Thank you. Jimin, sir.
लखपत सर यस सर सर वील बी स्टार्टिंग एट थ्री Yes, sir. So we uh, have time. It's almost like uh, 59 by my watch. Okay. So let me know, sir. We can start, or you would like me to wait for a couple of more minutes? Yes, sir. I think we should wait for another two, three minutes, and we have Professor Neetu Jain with us. She will be starting with the formal welcome, and then we can go ahead with the session. Fair enough, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, ma'am. Good evening, sir. uh ma'am i would be uh, sharing you the host right so that you can uh, share your screen in case uh, there is a presentation that you want to go with and, no, there is no uh, need to share the screen sir no need to okay. share the screen kind of ma'am so uh, probably uh, then uh, you have the access to mute and unmute yourself so we'll start as per the uh, schedule ma'am okay sir thank you okay
Good evening and thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, within a short span of time, we will uh, begin uh, this session. Good afternoon all. As we know, the world is suffering from COVID-19 pandemic. And during the situation, all types of libraries have promoted their digital services with an idea of providing a quick, accurate, and smooth access to scholarly databases and knowledge from domain of dig digital uh, reservoir. I, Neetu Jain, on behalf of Library Committee, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, welcome expert of EPSCO, our patron and principal, Dr. Father John P.J., Vice Principal, Dr. Sister Sonia Korean, all HODs, colleagues, and participants to the training session on EBSCO eBooks. EBSCO is the leading provider of research databases, e-journals, magazines, eBooks, and discovery services or to the libraries of all kinds. With quality databases and research features, EPSCO supports the digital necessity of the students. Neetu ma'am, you are not audible. Unmute yourself. Uh. Am I audible now? Are we audible? Yes, now audible. From uh, the very... From the beginning, was it muted? No, no, in between. Okay, okay. okay. Just, so... just two, three seconds before. Okay, okay, ma'am, okay. you can re okay. you can go ahead. Okay. So, uh, I, Neetu Jain, on behalf of Library Committee, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, Welcome expert of EPSCO, our patron and principal, Dr. Father John P.J., Vice Principal, Dr. Sister Sonia Korean, all HODs, colleagues, and participants to the training session on EPSCO eBooks. EPSCO is the leading provider of research databases, e-journals, magazines, eBooks, and discovery services to libraries of all kinds. With quality databases and search features, EPSCO supports the digital necessity of the students. We have with us Mr. Lakpat Singh Naruka to give us insight about access to EPSCO platform. Mr. Lakpat Singh is serving as an engagement manager at EPSCO Information Services based at New Delhi, India. He is postgraduate from Delhi University. He works with a variety of libraries in Northern India to help them in utilizing EBSCO database interfaces and services. He has been a part of the EBSCO training team since January, 2018. He follows collaborative approach towards sales and support for benefiting the ultimate users. As a training manager, he traveled throughout India and trained subscribing institution on, on site. He has around 14 years of experience of working in e-learning K-12 level and training industry. Now, I would like to invite you, sir, to start the session. And over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your uh, wonderful thoughts. And good evening, everyone. Uh, indeed, it's a pleasure for me to uh, present uh, this session for the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. And uh, before I uh, start my session, I would pray to Almighty for well-being of uh, all of us to keep us safe. And uh, with this, uh, I would take the pride in sharing my screen and this session. Uh, as suggested uh, in the beginning in the ma'am about the paradigm shift which has occurred all of a sudden and uh, the way the scenario has asked the mankind to adopt the new changes. The digital technology has helped us in the some way. Now, being a part of uh, this particular platform, EBSCO is one of the aggregators who have tried to support the end users in this particular scenario. And for the ease of users, there were multiple innovations which have been taken care of. 
In today's session, I would like to talk about some of the exclusive features which are benefit for the students as well as for the faculty members and the end users. But before that, uh, just to share you with some of the housekeeping rules. This is a hands-on session. All the participants, their microphones and the videos are turned off by default. If you have a question on the topic, I would request to please use the chat option uh, so that we can take care of your questions. And end of the session, there would be a small assignment which would be shared to the link and all the participants will be entitled to get an e-certificate. But before we start uh, with the live demo, I would also request all the participants who have joined us recently. Uh, with this paradigm shift, EPSCO has initiated one of the advancements and this is in the form of a mobile app. Uh, we have a QR code available for you on the screen and I would request all the participants if you can scan this QR code and download the EBSCO mobile app either from your app store or you can get it from the Google Play and be ready so that the next segment that we will do on this particular session would help you up to know the usability of EBSCO mobile app and how with a single click users can access the entire collection anytime, anywhere. Along with this, I would also request participants, if you are accessing the EBSCO host using your browser, you can always note the login credentials which are shared on the screen. Though the login credentials has already been shared by your library, however, as a use of, I would request the participants to make a note of this username and a password so that you can always access the EBSCO resources remotely in case if you are not able to access into the campus. Just to give you an overview about the academic collection that we have for uh, ebooks, as of now, EBSCO has a multidisciplinary ebooks uh, from thousands of top publishers. We have the options, and there are multiple ordering options which are available for the users. The books are available in the form of individual ebooks and curated collection, along with the collection management resources. Some of our selected award-winning titles which are available in the academic collection, which I'm sure you all have across uh, the campus have served for some interesting titles, have the collection that is available in the form of PDF. And the users can not only access the resources online, but at the same time, they can also access the resources offline. There are a few search strategies that I would like to share in today's session so that we can benefit with the access of surfing the content at the same time, we can get the most cute information about the collection, which is a part of your e-resources. At the same time, we would also talk about the mobile app, as I shared in the beginning, with the scan code, which I've shared. And I would also request the users that there are certain features which are a part of EBSCO mobile app that we will talk about once we'll come on a live demo for the EBSCO mobile app, which is now fully functional. And with this ultimate app, where the users can not only get the access to check out the ebook availability, they can bookmark the particular section, they can source the information, they can check out the information on the mobile app. And with the live demo, I would request the participants to make a note of my contact number and my email address. So in future, any assistance you require regarding the accessing of EBSCO host resources, please feel free to contact us. Okay, now before I move on to the live platform demo, please allow me a minute to change my screen so that it will be easier for all of us. Now, once we log into the URL, which is search.epscohost.com, or the users can always log in to your uh, library portal, wherein you can see a beautiful library desktop pages front, where you click on the link, and this link will take you to the library page, and users can also select the important links under which the users will get the access of key resources, which are a part of your subscription. So if you would like to directly access the library collection, you can click on the link for EBSCO and click here and you'll be directed to the EBSCO page. Now, once we log into the EBSCO page, this is how the search page will appear for us, wherein it will ask you to select a specific profile, which means the EBSCO host ebook collection. Now, once you have selected the specific profile of EBSCO host, it will be ready for you to search for the entire collection that we have for the academic collection of ebooks. 
Now, one thing which I would request all the participants to make a note, and this I would request to be careful while accessing the e-books, I am sure there would be instances when the users were trying to download the book and they were getting some sort of download errors, or maybe there were a couple of issues which were not able to help them download the book. So the first thing first comes is that once you land up on this particular page of Expohost Global Search Page, there would be a sign-in option on the right-hand side. I would request all the participants to click on the sign-in option and create their personal user account. Once we have a personal user account created, this will ensure that you can always build your own repository of collection into your folder. Not only with this, if it goes with your Google authentication, which we have already done it, so users can use their existing Gmail account and they can save the time by remembering multiple username and passwords. And not only with this, they can access the collection anytime, anywhere. In case if you're not comfortable using a Google Gmail account, you can also select the option called create one and you can create a new account for yourself. However, the best way recommended is to go with your Gmail account so that you don't have to remember multiple username and passwords. And once you select your respective designated uh, Gmail ID, which I'm going to show you right now with my demo account. So once we are logged in with the account, you will see it has taken my Gmail credentials and along with this credential, it will show my name on the screen that confirmed that now this is a personal account for Lakwood. This is the reason I have requested not only to have a personal account so that you can have your designated personal folder. However, there are some add-on features which will do in course of time. Now, once users are on this landing page and you can confirm your name appearing on the right-hand side and in the center, my, which confirms this is your personal account, you are all set to start exploring this platform. The first thing that I would request users, if you know the title of your book, if you know a specific field, you can always select to this particular drop-down option, which is termed as advanced search page. And as the name suggests, advanced search place is a place which allows you to experiment with your searches where you can add some interesting keywords. And then the basis of your keywords, you would be able to get the results. However, if you have a specific source that you would like to derive the information, you can always sort the information through this drop-down box, which gives you information like alt text, author, title, subject terms, and you can search the information. For the ease of users, especially for the students, I would request them, before you start searching the experiments, you can always scroll down and you can browse the books to different categories. As the entire page has a good amount of categories which are available to you, so instead of looking for a specific title directly, if you're not sure about this, this is the best way that we can look for the categories which are available on the left hand side. And there I can find the category which of my choice. I can start with children and young fictions. I can also check for art and architecture, biographies, body, mind, spirit, business, economics, computer sciences, and further information which is there in the form of categories. Now, once you decide a specific category and if you would like to access a specific book, I can always check on the book. So if my uh, nature subject is about the literature and criticism, I will select the specific subject and within the subject, I will see the collection which is there for me. Now, if you can see, I have selected the title under the literature and I have found a good number of books which are available on the result page, which confirm that there are 41,000 ebooks which are available for the users. Now, first thing, which I would again be repeating, the moment we log in with a personal account, and this is how the landing page opens with your result, the users will see there are different titles which are available. For example, there's a first title, which is there in the form of a book which says missing, which also sees the detail about the author. And underneath, I can see the publication information. I can check the subject, the category, and the detailed information about this. And if I wish to go ahead and download this book, I can always go ahead and check the downloads available on the left hand side in the form of a PDF. Or if I would like to go for a full download, I have a full download available. However, please remember when you would like to download the entire book, this has to be full download option available once you have done your personal sign up. Not only with this, there are some more features that I would like to show. Now, if you can see the moment I change my screen, I am on a altogether different screen. And this screen is termed as a basic search screen. And as the name suggests, 
This particular screen is a screen which is normally recommended for the beginners who would like to experiment with the platform. Now, when we are on this platform, and if I'm not sure about any searches, but as a random word, I would like to look for some keywords. I can enter my keyword like this. And I can search for some titles. I will be also directed with some drop down options, which will give me some recommended titles available under the collection. However, if I would like to stuck to my keyword, I would enter my keyword and click on the search option so that I'll be directed to this result page. This is the same result page that we derived by we selecting the ebooks from different subjects and categories. Now, if you can see, we have this title of this book available with the abstract and the subject this particular book is dealing with. And the interesting part is this, this has a PDF full text, a full download option available, an option which says table of content and the option which says most relevant pages from this book. So as a user, if you would like to go with either of the options, you can select the form. Now, what I would request if you like the book and if you would like to add this book to your personal folder so that you can read this book offline, every title which you get, there is a plus sign which is on the right hand side. And if you click on this plus sign, this turns out to be yellow in color. So this is a yellow box that confirms that this particular book has been added to your posting folder, which is available on the top right hand side panel. This is the folder which comes to you by default once you have done your personal sign in so that your collection starts getting stored in your folder. And this is a cloud folder. Now, if I would like to download a book, or if I would like to read this book, but before that, I would like to show you some features which are a part of this book. And that thing is called, in case if I would like to share this book. Imagine being a faculty member, I like the book and I would like to share this book with my students so that they can always read and get benefited. I will try and check the features. I would click on the title of this book, which says a crisis management. And the moment I click on the title, I am directed to a page which we term as a detailed page. And as you can see, the term itself explains the detailed page means on this page, there are many options which are available. So there is a left hand side panel, which allows you to download the book. There is a center panel, which gives you a detail about the book, along with the sources, publication information, the abstract. And on the right hand side, there are some tools available. These are the handy tools which comes with every article or the book that you're going to get on this particular platform, which allows you to add the link of the book to Google Drive. So if you have a Gmail authentication card, you can save the link to your Google Drive. If you wish to take a printout of this book, we have a feature that allows you to take the printout. And interestingly, the email feature, which allows you to share this book with your end users. So if you would like to share this book, all you need to do is select the title, click on this email link, and this will open the email tab for you. So by default, the mail would be from support at EBSCO that can be replaced to your personal email ID. And then email to the place where you would like to enter the email ID of recipients. Mention your subject and comment, and there you can select the standing formats. Would you like to share this book into which specific format? Once you've decided the format, sharing it in the specific citation format, you can always select the drop down and you can check the citation formats which are available from this drop down. And once you have selected your choices, you can click on the send button and there would be a confirmation that will say that this particular book has been shared with n number of users. If you would like to save this book to your folder, you can always click on the save button and you can save this book to this folder. We also have a unique feature which says export, which is a beneficiary feature for the maintaining the references. And I would like to put this thought in the parking lot as of now so that I can tell you end of the session that how this export feature is beneficial, especially for the reference maintenance for the research scholars. Now, once we have done with this particular title of checking the book from the basic search and then opening the book title, sharing the information about by emailing, saving. If it is, I would like to read the full book or if I would like to download the full book, I would click on the full download option. Now, here comes the second mandate, which is once you are on this page and if you would like to download the book, it will be a drop down that will appear and will give you the restriction that the users can borrow this book either for a one day and maximum for seven days. Once you have done this, please make sure that you all need to have an Adobe Digital Edition to read this book on your laptops or desktop. So you need to click on the checkbox, allow this checkbox. And in case you already have the digital edition done, check the box and click on full download. Once you click on full download, the full download would be available to you on your machine. And you can see the download 
get stored to the place where you have allowed the download for your book. But at the same time, as I said in the beginning, if in case I would not like to download the book, maybe I would like to store the book to my folder. All I need to do is just click on the save button and the book will be added to my folder, which would be available on the top navigation bar. Now, once we have decided checking out the book and I have opened the book, I've read the book, I have added the book, I also have shared the book. There would be instances wherein you would not like to download the entire book, but then maybe I just want to have a chapter downloaded or maybe I'm looking only for a specific information on the book. So for that users, we have the option called TOC, which allows you to check the chapters with the specific TOC that makes comfortable and easy for you all to look for a specific chapter. And once you open the chapter, you can download the complete chapter instead of downloading entire book. You can also look for most relevant pages from the book by the option most relevant pages and it will give you the information about the relevant pages wherein the titles which you have mentioned is available to you and if you click on pdf full text so there would be another thing that i would like to share as the publisher's restriction when you are trying to download a book without your personal sign in it may not be allowed you to download the complete book and will ask you to download the book in the form of parts and pieces in this case, if you can see, when I have selected the PDF option, it says the book can be downloaded in the form of 100 pages at a time. So you need to download the book 100 pages at a time, which may become a little tedious. So I would recommend again to have your personal account logged in. And once the personal account is done, you would be able to have the full download ready for this. Now, coming back to the result list, wherein we were looking for some titles for the ebook. I would like to show you some more features. Now, if I would like to add some specific titles at a one go, and I do not want to have one by one, I can always go ahead and change my preferences. And there are certain filters which are available on this detail page. If you will see on the left-hand side of the screen where you have the title called Refined Results, it will say that you can limit your filters by applying to full text downloads available, and you can always sort the publication date. So if you're looking to get the latest collection for the title which you have mentioned, you can change the publication date. So as of now, I have the results from 1971, but if I would like to change it to 2015 to 2019, I can always change the title. And with that, I'll have some handful of collection. Now, if I would like to add all 164 books to my resources, I can either go ahead and click on this option, which is called share and I'll click on results and by default, the first 10 pages will be added to my folder because I have selected the pages one to 10 at one go. But if you want to add more pages so that all the results come at a single page, you can always select the page option and select 50 as the result per page option so that you will have the 50 pages at a one go and you can add all the 50 books at a single go to your particular folder. Now, if you can see, from 10, it has come to 50. And if I click on the share button, if I click on 1 to 50, all the results which I have for fifth, first 50 pages will be added to my personal folder. And every book that was going to be there will have this yellow folder available. This confirms that this particular book has been added to my personal folder. Users can also sort out the books with your publisher choice. So in case if you would like to have some filters wherein you would like to see a specific subject or a publisher, you can scroll down under the refined results and there you can see we have the choice that you can filter using the subject option, the option which says the publisher, there's an option which says the language and the category. So if you're looking for a specific subject under crisis management, you can always look for some interesting titles which are available to you under this broader term of crisis management. And if you click on show more, you will have the complete terms which are available to you with related to the crisis management. And assuming that under crisis management, I would like to talk about, or I would like to read about the industrial management wherein I have got six titles available. I can sort those six titles simply by selecting the subject terms. And there I can see, I found the results which I'm looking forward for the titles which are related to the industrial management. And if you want to add the titles, you can click on the box and this box get added to your personal folder. All right, so this is how we can look for the books, check the book, we can read the abstract, we can look for certain tools and there the book can be shared option. Now, what is that I'm going to show is my favorite options. 
Once the user has added the books to my folder, if you would like to check out the books later on, you can select the option of folder, which is on the top navigation bar. And once you click on the folder, this will take you to a new page, which will be titled as my folder. And there you can see there are designated folders available. However, as we are talking exclusively about ebooks, so you can see my ebook folder has got 51 books, which I have saved. Now, if you want, you can select the checkbox and there you have the same email option available, which will allow you to share these books to end users using this email option. Not only with this, as I was talking about maintaining the references, as a research scholar, if I would like to maintain my references for the titles, all I need to do is to select the books which I have and I would select the export button from the right hand side panel. Once I have selected the export button, it will open a page and it will ask me how I would like to export my references. So in case if you're using RIS format, if you're using the EasyWeb and Note Pro site, you can directly export titles to it. However, for the users who do not have any of the software, but they're using a simple CSV file or you're using the Noodles tools, you can always export them to it. Now in this case, because I do not have any particular software, I'm going to download my references to a simple CSV file and I'll click on save. And once I have done my save feature, you can see there would be a CSV file that is going to be available to me. And once I open my file, you can see all the 50 titles which I've saved to my folder would be there in my reference file in a standard format. This particular activity will not save your time, but it will also make sure the kind of errors which come in by meeting the reference, especially with the errors or making sure that we are adding the proper data. Now, once I get this Excel file open up and I can show you how convenient this is to maintain the references. So we can see it's just getting process. And there you can see I have my Excel file ready. So it has got the titles like article. I have got author. I have got journal, ISN, ISBN, publication, volume, issue, first page, page count, accession, publisher, subject, keyword, abstract, and commenting. Now, let me just show you that this is not something that I'm recommending the research scholars to maintain it. However, most of the time when the students are also working on their projects, they have to maintain the presentation. They need to give the sources. While you're documenting the sources at a time, this becomes a little difficult for you to do it in a proper format. But this way, if you have maintained the sources by adding the titles to your folder, and from there, if you have exported them to the bibliographic software management, this will make sure that your sources are authentic and they are in a proper format. If you like to click on the map option, it will take you to my folder option where you can further go ahead and look for some more interesting features. Now, once we are done with the searching of the books and looking for some options of PDF, downloading the full download with your personal sign in and adding them to your personal folder, I would like to take a pause over here for uh, two, three minutes. And I would request participants if in case if you are practicing it online as of now, and if you have any issue, so you can please feel free to share your feedback or your question to me in the chat box, or you can unmute yourself and go for it. So we do have some uh, five, I would say two to three minutes so that you can practice by your own, or you can share your question with what we have done so far before we move ahead on the next part of this section. Okay, well, I do not see questions coming in the yes, chat. Sir, I have a question. Sure, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, uh, suppose say I'm, 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 I'm taking a, a following session for uh, say uh, social works. So do you suggest that uh, as a faculty, uh, obviously I need to uh, give some uh, uh, reading list or kind of uh, a course material uh, to my students? Uh, so do you think that this export feature can help me into, you know, let, let me first search out some books, uh, create a folder, save 10 or 15 or five or six uh, odd books into that thing, and then create an actual seat. And obviously you've shown in the last 
there is a permanent link. So, and then I can share as a PDF file or as an Excel file to all my students and then say that, you know, this, for this semester, this six months, these are the books you have to refer. So do, do you think that this export feature will help me into that? So, uh, sir, a uh, very interesting question. And uh, this is, uh, there is a very interesting uh, feature we have on our platform. So if you allow me uh, with this, we can go and show you this particular feature. But to just give you an answer, uh, this particular feature will definitely help the faculty members to maintain a standard reference a reading list. And at the same time, they can always share the titles with the end users. They can keep on adding, they can keep on editing it. And uh, for the convenience of it, this would become a very handful uh, feature. So I would definitely and talk one, one more question associated with it. Suppose say I'm, I'm a faculty and I'm teaching five subjects, different subjects. So can I have a, like, you know, multiple folders options where I can, for every subject or every topic, I can create separate one and direct to separate groups or something like that? Absolutely. So we do have this feature. So, uh, okay. So I guess so we do not have uh, any other question coming up uh, apart from uh, your question. So what I'm going to do is I will show you this some uh, interesting feature that we have. And uh, this feature we call as a web pages. So uh, just to give you a brief about the web pages. So when uh, and this is exclusively for the faculty members. So the first thing first comes is that uh, the users need to add uh, their titles into their personal folder, which is a mandate. So once the faculties have created uh, their folders where they have added the books to their particular folder, and now if they would like to segregate the books using a specific place to uh, the users, we have an exclusive feature. And if you just come to this My Folder page, and if you just scroll down, uh, on the left hand side panel, just above my custom, you will see there's a link called web pages. Now, web pages is one interesting place wherein uh, not only that we request you to incorporate the EBSCO resources, however, in case if there are some other resources which uh, you have, maybe you have something that you would like to share from the Google or maybe some other open sources, and you would like to incorporate it, everything in a single folder, we have this uh, exclusive place. Now, what I'll show you is that, uh, like I have created uh, some of the demo web uh, pages for a few of my uh, interesting uh, you know, the, uh, online sessions. So I will just open uh, one of the demo uh, folder that I've uh, created and I'll show you how it can be done. So for example, I have this particular folder which says uh, demo reading list and I have this link called edit uh, web page. So what I'll do is I will just open this page and I'll show you the look and feel of the page and I'll show you how you can create it. So now you can see, click on that particular particular page wherein I have the option to uh, give the instructions. Like for example, uh, Yashwish Jesus mentioned that maybe I would like to have a specific folder for social studies and then I'll have some specific for business management and all. So I can just create uh, my folder with a title, let's say. So I am just taking hypothetical data over here. Now, what I would like to do is that uh, uh, Yashwiji would like to add some specific titles from his folder. So you all can see that on the left hand panel, we have a link which says folder items. Folder items is a place wherein the faculties can export the EBSCO uh, saved articles to this particular folder so that they can give the selective articles. So if you want to add a specific folder, just click on the folder item and this will add the book to you. Now, imagine that I do not want to add any EBSCO article, but maybe I would like to add certain charts or certain images to this presentation, maybe a specific case study, which is talking about supply chain management. So what can I you click onto the Can you click onto the folder and show how, how I can select books? Yes, sir. So I've done it, sir. Yeah, so I've done this folder click, sir, and it will take some time to export it. So I will just, uh, in the meantime, I'll uh, come to the images part. <clears throat> So you are saying that it, it will take all the items from entire folder. Suppose no, uh, I have saved 50 books in my folder and I just want to assign 10 books to this assignment. So is it possible like that? So, uh, so the folder items will allow you to select the uh, five uh, titles from this particular folder. So once you click on this folder, it will give you the detail about the first five articles which you have. So you have to do it in a batches wise. You cannot export all the uh, 10 titles at a one go. Okay. 
I'm sorry, there was a little issue from internet. Let me just do it again. Okay, so in the meantime, I uh, get uh, this particular folder thing fixed. I would just uh, put this uh, question in uh, hold and I will just come to the next option, uh, which is the images part. Now, assuming that uh, like uh, I'll take the same uh, question which has been asked by uh, sir that, you know, I would like to, you know, make a customized one. So what I would like to do is now that adding the titles, I would like to add some more information, maybe some uh, charts or some descriptions about some titles, if, if, any XY thing, but that is from the open sources. So I'm going to come to this open source and I'm going to enter a title, which is Now, what I would like to do is this, instead of uh, any specific article, I would simply come to images and I will see a specific diagram that can be uh, related to my subject. So I will just pick up one random diagram from here. So maybe I can take the first one and I will copy the URL. So I will just copy the link and I'll come back to the folder and I'll click on the images tab. Sorry, this seems to Uh, allow me a minute, please. I guess I need to clear the cookies of Mr. Shum, so allow me a minute, please. In the meantime, I would request uh, participants that if you have any question uh, regarding what we have discussed so far, uh, you can please document in the chat box so I can uh, take care of your questions also. And I will just fix up the issue. Maybe there seems to be a little issue with the system. So I have to clear uh, some of the browsing data and the cookies so that it can be properly done. Uh, hi, just uh, uh, since uh, Lakpat is a bit busy with clearing his cookies and other things, I would like I would like to take a moment and tell you that uh, uh, this this is a very strong feature from EBSCO, wherein uh, uh, you can create your own sort of page or, or folder and you can share with your students. Uh, I have I have been always talking to Jibin sir and and many of the librarians. Uh, one of uh, the challenges. Uh, as far as uh, the online resources are uh, concerned is its usability. Less number of people are using it. Everybody is not using it. So the management uh, does not like to invest much into it to scale it up and uh, uh, you know make more additions to uh, online resources. Uh, one of the major region that you know you can in inculcate a habit and if you start from today, it will take some time. Uh, I, I am sure that every faculty is uh, trying to create some kind of reading list, some kind of curriculums, and you always suggest four or five uh, kind of textbooks or global textbooks or reference books, or kind of few uh, reading from some, some articles from here and there, some magazine articles, some images, but uh, you might be doing it in, in a different way at different places. Uh, by this, you can bring everything all together, uh, not only the EBSCO resources, uh, but non-EBSCO resources also means some image. Uh, you can see here the search box or the background horizontal rules. Uh, you can make a nice space. And once you will share those links with the students, they will always click onto that link 
from e either their mobile devices or their computers or laptops. And anyway, the uses of resources will increase. So once the uses of resources will increase, uh, um, you can again talk to the management for maybe uh, getting more subscriptions from different publishers or, or resources. And also, uh, I was just working with the same bosses university, Pune, and uh, one of the good private university. Uh, what they have done is that they have started creating all their reading lists into online format. Uh, uh, many of them are using uh, EBSCO things. Few of uh, computer science faculties have developed their own web pages, and, and there they do it. But again, it is at your disposal. You can start creating that. And they have also uh, assigned some marks some internal marks, like, you know, every time you have got 30 or 25 or 40 odd marks in your hand, and they have assigned three, four marks to, you know, online uh, resources usage or, or library participation kind of thing. Uh, you always talk to the librarians to implement this. So when you, you think that this is the right time uh, of assigning two, three marks for library participations or kind of these kind of activities, uh, it would be helpful for, for institutions as a researcher to you and for students as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> I seems to have uh, not a good day with internet today. So my entire Chrome has crashed. I'm just restarting it. This might take another few uh, minutes. So uh, just to uh, share with uh, what uh, Shah has just mentioned about this, that uh, being, you know, talking about uh, looking for the article is one thing that I'm sure we all are comfortable in. But what makes it very interesting is part is that that not only uh, searching the articles or uh, looking for the articles is important at how convenient the resources are being shared with the end users. And uh, this particular feature uh, that uh, we was trying to showcase you uh, is one feature that not only allows you to add the articles uh, into your repository as in you maintain a, a personal collection of yours, but always you can share this collection with end users. And the best part is this, uh, once we have maintained this uh, particular repository of uh, uh, the web pages, which incorporates not only the EBSCO resources, but also as like Shweji mentioned, uh, we can incorporate some other resources also to this. This, uh, if I have to use this term, it uh, basically shows the proof of our work that uh, there is something exclusive which we have done apart from maintaining uh, things on a piece of paper. So uh, this is one part and uh, let me just show you my screen again, maybe if this time I'm lucky one to uh, work on this. So uh, we were talking about the collection and I was sharing that uh, how uh, the folder works for you. So I am just logged into my demo account again because there was an issue with my laptop. So I'm going to, uh, sorry, internet. So just log in with the username and password. And uh, just uh, one thing that I have been sharing again and again is that, that please make sure that uh, individual users need to have their personal account. So that is one thing that I would always request you to please be careful of that. If you have your personal account, this will uh, be the first feature that you need to uh, start creating your personal repository. Now, once I have my folder, so I am going to select my folder option. and I'll be on the web pages. So I would just scroll down and uh, I'll just show you some web pages that I have. Okay, so I'll just show you uh, one of the demo page which I've created and the features. So we were talking about the first feature which is the text part where you can always uh, put your instructions. The folder item is the place uh, which unfortunately uh, it seems to be a problem with the uh, system is not uh, accepting this. So the moment you click on the folder item, it will select the articles which you've added to your personal folder, which is available on the uh, right hand side panel. Then the images part is a place wherein you select the images part and uh, this is how uh, the page will open for you. So you can put the caption over here. You can put the URL. So if you recall, we have selected the supply chain management uh, uh, image and uh, I will just put the caption. And how do you want to place the image? So maybe if I would like to add it in the center, I'll say add to web page. So my image gets added. 
and then I can integrate a search box. Now, this particular feature is I would uh, recommend uh, this to be uh, not recommend. I'm sorry, but I would uh, request you all uh, to take this part as an important aspect of this web pages because uh, we have a certain list which we already have shared with the students. However, we do have some progressive students who would like to look for some information on their own. And when they uh, rely on the reading list, which you have shared, you can always create a search box with your reading list. So in case if they're looking for some additional help, they can do it within your uh, reading list only. They do not have to come on the platform. So how does it work? I'll show you. So I created a search box and I'll give a title to it. So I'll say additional help and I will just put it on the left hand side and I'll click on add to page so that my two features one is the image which I created and my uh, search box which I created is there now assuming that you know I have some web links also the some permanent links which I've taken from some other sources which I would like to share with my users so how do I take care of it So I'm going to uh, take a standard keyword and I will see if I can get an article. So I can see there are a few articles which are talking about crisis management. So I will just take the first random article and I will copy the link. I will come back to my web link feature, select the web link option. Again, uh, in the text part, I will mention the title In the web link option, I will paste the URL. So I'll say, And then I click on the web pages. Now, with this part, before I can do further beautification of this platform uh, for this folder, I will just scroll down and I can see everything has been added to my folder. Now, before I give a final version to it, I can see some benefits, which is the first benefit, like Yashmiji mentioned, is sharing. So you can see there's an email button which is there. So, as a faculty, I can share the entire folder to my students. I can download it, I can take a copy of it, and before I share it to the users, I will click on preview, and I can see, so uh, this was the demo that I created. So you can see these are the uh, links which I have already added from my EBSCO page. I have added the crisis management right now, the image which I added for supply chain management, which I have added over here, and then you can see there are some links which I already have done it previously. So this is the uh, image which I've added today. Then I created the search box with the title uh, additional help and then the crisis management link. So this is the customized folder. And I'm sorry, I was not able to create it as beautiful as uh, we can do it. So it's more innovation, how you can change the background and all. So there are features available wherein you can see uh, inserts of good background images and all. So you can have some good colors to uh, this particular folder. And then you have the horizontal views and the background feature where you can add some just backgrounds to your folder. And then you can fill it. But the best part uh, is this, that once you have this particular folder created for yourself, you can always share this particular folder to end users. And this will become a record for yourself so that every time there is a same subject that has to be taken care of it for the next batch. I can just come to my folders. I'll pick my folder and I'll share my folder with little changes that I can do for it. So this is a unique feature that we have, which comes under my folder option. And if you just scroll down, you have the link called web pages, which allows you to uh, create a web page. Now, uh, to create a new web page is very interesting. So if you can see the moment you click on the web pages link, there is a small icon which says page composer on the center panel uh, under this link which says page one, two, three. So if you just click on this small uh, icon, which has a stick uh, and a paper like a matchstick kind of thing, this is how it will say. So it'll come over here. So I will just click on this and you can see I have created a folder with the title under the DSSS library demo and I have my folder there and now I can start adding the details the way I would like to add for it. So I hope, uh, Yashwiji, this is the point that you wanted me to bring uh, to the questions. OK. Now, uh, coming back to another uh, feature, which is a part of uh, this particular collection, is the inbuilt dictionary. 
Uh, most of the time when we are uh, working on uh, the searches or we are looking for uh, the titles, at the time we always look for some refined results for it. So as a part of this subscription, there's an element dictionary which is there for end users. So this dictionary is supported by Oxford American College and you can always use it as a normal e-dictionary which is available to you. And if you would like to come back to the new searches, there is a new search tab on the left hand side which takes you back to the new search page and you can start looking for the titles as per your subscription. Please remember, uh, by default, the page comes to you in the search feature, which is like a basic search screen, the way it is there, or it might come with, with multiple search boxes, which we term as advanced search, which would be like multiple search boxes are there. And then you have the choice to incorporate your keywords, adding the Boolean operators like and or not. So I will just show you on the screen right now. So there is an option to drop down select and or not. And then you have your ebook titles, which are there that you can browse uh, with specific categories, which are there on the left hand panel. And there you can see the categories there for you. And once you have decided the category, you can always browse the titles either with the searches or you can add the titles into your particular folder by clicking on the folder button, which is a blue color icon, and that makes sure that it gets added to your personal folder, which further allows you to share this book and maintain your personal repository. So uh, with this note, I would like to take a pause over here. And uh, again, I would request uh, for a question and answer round before we uh, go for the final version of the mobile lab. So any other questions before we move on to the mobile lab? Okay, so uh, as I do not see any questions coming up for the uh, platform, so I am going to uh, play a very small video and uh, this video will basically give you the entire information about the EBSCO mobile app, how the mobile app is benefited and what all features are part of this mobile app. And as I have shared with the participants that uh, we have uh, the mobile app available uh, in the Google and you can also download it uh, through the app store. So I'm going to share the QR code again. And in the meantime, I would request participants, if they want, they can always download the uh, mobile app. So there's a scan code, which is there for you all. You can uh, always download the uh, QR code and you can download the app. And uh, just to give you a brief about the EBSCO mobile app, and the best part about the mobile app is that, that as it's been compatible now with the ebooks, so this becomes a handy tool for the users. So allow me a second, please. I... The EBSCO mobile app provides library users with an easy way to access their library's EBSCO host and EBSCO discovery service resources. It is available for Apple and Android devices from the iTunes App Store and Google Play Store. After downloading the app, open it on your device and tap Get Started. Tap the search box to find your library or tap Use My Location to find a library near your physical location. Select your institution from the list and click Next. Tap Continue to allow the app to continue to sign you in, then log in using the method provided by your institution, such as a username and password combination, single sign-on, or a library card barcode. Or, if you have already created a personal user account, you can sign in with your personal account credentials. From the mobile app home screen, you can access articles you've recently viewed, discover recent subjects, and view content that is popular on the app. When viewing recent subjects, you can swipe left to view more. To search the app, begin by tapping the magnifying glass in the menu at the bottom. Enter your search terms in the search box. Then tap Search on your device's keyboard to run the search. Or, 
Tap a filter, peer-reviewed, full text, or date range to apply it to your search. Your results are displayed. Tap an article or book title to see the details or read the full text when available. Scroll down to view the details of the article. You can view all subjects related to an article by swiping to the left. If full text is available, tap Read Now to read the article. Tap the Like icon to save the article within the app. Tap the Likes icon at the bottom of the screen to view your saved articles. When you are logged into the app using the Find My Organization option, liked articles are saved until you are logged out of the app, at which time they are removed. When you are logged in to the EBSCO mobile app with your personal user account, articles that are liked in the app are also saved to your personal My EBSCO Host folder and are available from anywhere you log in to EBSCO Host or EDS. The EBSCO mobile app lets you share links to articles using your device's tools. Tap the Share icon and select the desired method to share the link to an article from your device options. The EBSCO mobile app interface can be translated into multiple languages by changing the language in your device's settings. Please refer to your individual device's support materials for more information. To learn more about the EBSCO mobile app, as well as how to create your own personal account, please visit EBSCO Connect at connect.ebsco.com. I'm sorry uh, for this another video. So uh, this was the uh, simple link that uh, talks about how the EBSCO mobile app can be used. And uh, with a single click, this is available to you uh, with the entire collection of EBSCO resources uh, with this. So I would uh, request participants that if you have any other further question uh, before we can wind up, I would be happy to assist you on your queries. And uh, I would also request uh, Jabin sir, uh, if he can share the feedback link in the chat box so uh, that participants can uh, share the feedbacks and they can uh, download their e-certificates once they have done the feedback. Sir, uh, I, have sir I, have doubt. I have a doubt. Yes, please go ahead, sir. Sir, suppose we want to have it in offline mode. So is it possible to download these articles and uh, PDFs in offline mode? Right. So, sir, so, uh, that's the reason I requested you that uh, you have this folder option available, which basically helps you up to uh, look for that is offline. So if you have saved the books to your folder, then you can always okay. drag the books from within the folder itself, sir. And the PDFs are there for you. So you can download that and you can read the book in the PDF form also. Uh, no, but like I was trying to do it right now. So this folder can be opened when we are online. No, for, you can have this folder anytime open, sir. So you can do it online also and you can read the book offline also. So uh, do you want to read this book uh, to some other device apart from your laptop or how do you want to go for it, sir? Both the things. I want to have it in my soft copy and import it to some other device also. Or else yes, sir, it could be it, available in this device also offline. Yes, sir. It is there, sir. So what you can do is, so I will just showcase you. So for example, I'm taking this particular title and if okay. I would like to download the book, so this book has a PDF link available. Okay. So you can download the PDF, sir, and PDF is one link which you can read it offline. Okay. And secondly, sir, if you would like to uh, use this book, let's say you want to have this book in some other extension, maybe you want to have the book in Kindle or if you want to read this book in any other extension, so you can see there's an EPUB full text option available, sir. Fine. So you can have the EPUB full text. So let's say if you want to download in Kindle, so you just have to uh, have the proper software. And uh, once you have done it, so uh, from the download so uh, folder. That can be working with PDF reader, no? Absolutely, sir. This works with the PDF reader also. 
and uh, but like the, i uh, downloaded it in the soft copy but it's not getting compatible with the pdf adobe readers and all so what is the error is it getting for you sir Uh, that it uh, it is not compatible to open the so, file. Uh, have you got the Adobe edition on the uh, machine? Yeah, Adobe Reader. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, Adobe I am using. Okay, and still is giving you the error, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, well, that that case, sir, I would request you can either share me the screenshot, and I'll have to check from my backend team uh, what could be the reason. but the normal process is that at the moment you uh, select the download option it will ask you to uh, select uh, the adobe edition that has to be on your device and once it has okay. been downloaded you can always go ahead and uh, read that book into that particular format so it's a pdf format so you have the pdf if you want to read this book into any other extension like epub we have full text which goes and uh, take care of downloading the book so okay, sorry i have this error right now because i'm not logged into your account so mm -hmm. then it takes uh, you to that particular extension and uh, you can read the book into that specific extension okay okay and uh, yeah yes uh, neetu ma'am is also asking something all ma'am sir madam is asking for the if we can if we are able to download the entire pdf in this like e books or something or in case of research papers okay so uh, Ma'am, uh, as this collection is only about the e-books, so you can download only the e-books. However, okay. uh, when you're downloading the PDF, so that is the reason I have requested that the first thing for you need to do is that you should have your personal signing done. Folder, because, folder, personal folder. Uh, because when you come to download a PDF, so sir, PDF okay. basically allows you to download uh, the book into segments. So it's like because it's a publisher's agreement. So they ask you to download into batches. So you can download hundred pages, then hundred one to two hundred pages. So that you can do it uh, if you want to download a specific chapter or a paper. Otherwise, okay. the full download version is there for you, which allows you to download the entire book without any problem. The only thing is that if you want to read a book, you need to have the Adobe Edition uh, to be installed. Okay. Okay. And, uh, uh, and uh, 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 just to support you with this, also, sir, our EBSCO mobile app, uh, which the link which I have shared in the chat box for all the users. So the EBSCO mobile app is compatible, and you do not need to have an Adobe, uh, any Adobe ID on that, sir. So, for example, like uh, you do not want to download a book, but you want to, you know, save it uh, somewhere on your device. So uh, we have this mobile app available. So you can download the book, save it in the files in the mobile itself. and if you say no i would like to take a hard copy or it has to be in the uh, laptop or desktop then you can uh, mm. visit this particular version and download the pdf files okay, okay. so i thank hope you, this answers need to my question also yes yes yes, yes. thank you okay great thank you ma'am my pleasure and uh, i would uh, request all the participants uh, there is a feedback form which has been shared in the chat box this is an internal feedback form uh, for uh, the campus and uh, once you will fill this feedback form there would be a link for you to generate your e certificate for the session so you can uh, always uh, get the benefit of getting the e certificate and at the same time i would also request participants to kindly note my uh, contact details so that if you have any further assistance required you can either contact your librarian mr jibin thoms or you can write to us on my email id and my contact number and any questions that you have please feel free to ask because uh, though we have exceeded the time but still if you have any doubt i would be happy to assist you on this Okay, well, I do not see any questions at the moment. So, Gaurav sir and Jibin sir, we can uh, wind up the session. Yes, sir. Sure, we have uh, Dr. Shweta Bhatnagar, madam, with us. She will be going on with the vote of thanks. And uh, before that, also, I would like to appreciate uh, for the efforts that you have taken to give an enhancement towards the understanding of EBSCO from the students' point of view. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you, Shweta, ma'am. Now, uh, am I audible, Gaurav? Yes, ma'am. You are audible and you are visible yes. too. Yes. Uh, good. Good evening, everybody. Uh, 
our most valued resource person, Mr. Lakpat Singh Naruka. It's a pleasure for us to have you once again with uh, here, here with us on the virtual platform. All of us have got the opportunity to meet you in the teacher's session which you have conducted. And uh, there's something which is... Uh, you know, uh, worth praising about you is the simplicity with which you put in, uh, you know, uh, you explain the e this uh, the use of EBSCO. And uh, that is what I enjoyed throughout this session. And uh, formally proposing the word of thanks, uh, uh, all the attendees, I assist Professor Shweta Bhatnagar on behalf of Library Committee of Bhopal School of Social Sciences, takes this privilege to extend my heartfelt gratitude and propose a vote of thanks for today's session on the topic, Forge a Clear Path to Success through EBSCO eBook. Mr. Naruka, thank you so much for, the sim for simplifying the understanding on accessing and effectively using EBSCO e-library through browser as well as through EBSCO mobile app. You truly deserve an appreciation and applause for explaining EBSCO from the point of view of ease to the ultimate user. And thank you for providing clarity on the participants' queries. I, extend, I also extend my sincere thanks to Mr. Yashvir Singh, who is uh, not there at, at the moment with us here in the uh, participants list, attendees list. He's the marketing and the sales manager for EBSCO and the person who is instrumental in conducting uh, this session. Uh, which we have attended. And uh, thank you, uh, Yashvir, sir, for, uh, you know, putting up the queries from the teacher's point of view and helping us understand how to create and share the subject reference. EBSCO is truly a huge reservoir of e-text. Thank you, sir, for demonstrating how to access relevant content through various user-friendly drop-down selection filters. EBSCO has been thoughtfully designed for the users from uh, to uh, to make available high quality reference text on wide range of subjects i'm sure sir with this session our students and teachers must have derived in-depth understanding of EBSCO platform and going to be benefited in future as well last but not the least i extend my gratitude to the head of our institution father dr john pj for always being the source of motivation and uh, instrumental for uh, behind all such efforts that we make. I'd also like to place on record a sincere thanks to our librarian, Mr. Jibin Thomas, who has uh, been, uh, you know, day and night been thinking of conducting something uh, which makes the library more uh, reach to wide, uh, uh, to wide range of users and it can be optimized. And uh, I thank all the teachers and students who were a part of this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gaurav, over to you. Thank you so much, Shweta ma'am. And uh, actually, I would like to give a personal thanks to Lakpa sir also for taking such a wonderful initiative from his end. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for your time and having me on this show. So thank you all. And please do keep safe and uh, stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, feedback link is there in the chat box. I request all to please uh, fill it and submit. Thank you. And I think we can officially uh, wind up this session now. Yes, so thank you, everyone. And uh, so uh, the link is in the feedback in the chat box. So I guess uh, we'll have the uh, nice uh, responses on this. So thank you, everyone, once again. And please stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you and bye. Thank you,